Hi, I'm Aaron from Living Science Videos. Have you ever wondered why you start breathing harder the more you exert yourself, like when you run laps in gym class? The more you run, the harder you breathe. Breathe in oxygen, breathe out carbon dioxide, and then repeat. Your body's respiration system, including your lungs, is working harder to move more oxygen to your body's cells. Just like a car uses gasoline to keep its parts like the engine and wheels turning, uh, your body needs oxygen to fuel its processes and keep your parts like your arms and legs moving. What happens when a car runs out of fuel? It slows down and then stops. You also need to slow down and become tired when you use a lot of energy until your body can produce more energy. The process your body uses to make energy is called cellular respiration, the process by which cells obtain energy from the molecule glucose, which is a kind of sugar. Oxygen is also a vital chemical element that your body's cells need to carry on cellular respiration and make energy. Your body's individual cells don't breathe in the oxygen like you do in your larger respiratory system when you fill your lungs with air. That gets the oxygen to your cells through your bloodstream, but the way your cells respire is a very different process. Your cells actually use the oxygen your body breathes in to help start a chemical reaction to break down food. This is at the cellular level, so it is a microscopic process that you hardly ever notice unless you're studying it like you are right now. In order to get a look at this process, we're going to have to look inside the tiny cells that make up living things. In another video, we talked about mitochondria, an organelle inside the cell. Mitochondria are often called the powerhouse of the cell because they produce energy for the cells and thus the tissues that make up the organs of your body. But first, your cells need to break down glucose and other molecules from food in the presence of oxygen. This first stage is called glycolysis because glucose molecules are broken down into your cell cytoplasm. A small amount of energy is produced when this happens. Then in the second stage, these smaller molecules are broken down in the mitochondria. Cells that use a lot of energy, like muscle cells, have many mitochondria to provide them with the energy they need to spend. The mitochondria produces much more energy than is produced in the cytoplasm. Despite what is known even in modern times about cellular respiration, many people thought that body fat, or triglycerides, were lost by being converted to another form of energy, like heat. Others thought that fat could be directly converted into muscle. Still others thought that most of the body fat from weight loss was excreted through bodily waste, like feces. So just what does happen to the excess body fat when you diet and exercise? Where does it go? Look at the equation for cellular respiration, because the reactants and products of oxidation of fat molecules are similar. Body fat is lost through a reaction with oxygen, and the process also produces carbon dioxide and water. More than 80% of weight loss comes from breathing out the byproduct of carbon dioxide, the rest of which is water excreted through the body through other fluids such as sweat and urine. Something to think about the next time an aerobic activity such as a treadmill gets you huffing and puffing at the gym. Your body's chemical processes are a fascinating mixture of elements and compounds, whether solid, liquid, or gases. Lack of the element oxygen can even result in death from suffocation. Luckily, a healthy body obtains the elements it needs by eating, drinking, and breathing. Plants, algae, and cyanobacteria do things a bit differently than most of us heterotrophs, organisms that have to consume other organisms in order to survive. Plants make their own food automatically with the help of the sun and therefore are autotrophs. One fascinating bit of coevolution of the autotrophs and heterotrophs is that chemical reactants and products are used in reverse order. Plants use a process called photosynthesis to make their own food using the energy of the sun. We'll go into photosynthesis a little deeper in the next video. They also use cellular respiration like us autotrophs do. But look at the chemical equation for photosynthesis. Now compare that to the equation for cellular respiration. Do you notice a pattern? Instead of using glucose and six pairs of oxygen to make energy in addition to six molecules of carbon dioxide and six molecules of water, like in cellular respiration, autotrophs, like plants, do the process of obtaining and storing energy in reverse. Look at the equation for photosynthesis. Six molecules of carbon dioxide and six molecules of water aren't the product of the chemical reaction, they're the reactants. Also, the products are glucose plus six oxygen atoms in their typical pairing of O2. Most of our breathable oxygen is in the form of two atoms bonded together because oxygen is so reactive it'll bond with itself. Vive la différence! Because heterotrophs like us produce the carbon dioxide gas that autotrophs like plants need to survive through photosynthesis, and most autotrophs produce oxygen that heterotrophs like us need to survive. So perhaps it's not such a strange thing to hug a tree or maybe even talk to it too. 
because you're breathing out the CO2 it needs to produce energy and it's providing you with the oxygen you need to fuel your body's processes. Well, what about all the anaerobic organisms that we mentioned in an earlier video that can actually be harmed by the oxygen that we can't live without? What chemicals would the yeast that causes athlete's foot use to survive? It certainly can't use oxygen. Yeast and some forms of bacteria use a form of anaerobic respiration called fermentation, an energy releasing process that does not require oxygen. Unlike athlete's foot, sometimes the products of fermentation produces something that is tasty or smells good, like bread or beer. Perhaps you have heard of brewer's yeast or baker's yeast. The product of this type of fermentation is an alcohol called ethanol, the substance in beer that makes people tipsy. The bubbles that you see in beer are also the product of a chemical reaction of alcoholic fermentation because it also produces two molecules of carbon dioxide. In alcoholic fermentation, the glucose molecule is again used and broken down into energy and different chemical products than either cellular respiration or photosynthesis. But what happens to oxygen-deprived cells like your muscles when you work out and burn too much oxygen? How do they get the energy they need without that key component? They use much the same process as alcoholic fermentation, only the product isn't energy and alcohol, it's lactic acid. The food industry uses this type of fermentation to make cheese and yogurt. Lactic acid fermentation happens in organisms from fungi and bacteria to animal cells like muscle cells. Unfortunately, lactic acid also makes your muscles feel sore after an intense aerobic workout that required a lot of energy and oxygen. Now let's talk about one type of anaerobic respiration that is found in extremophiles, organisms that live in extremely oxygen poor environments that would kill most organisms that need oxygen to stay alive. Many microbes in the domain archaea use anaerobic respiration to produce energy because they live in environments like hot springs or hydrothermal vents and down in the earth's crust, places where there's little or no oxygen. Rather than lactic acid or ethanol, they produce a gas called methane. These are called methanogens. A type of methanogen lives in the digestive tracts of cows, and it's why cows burp methane. It's a living for methanogens, and the cow wouldn't be able to get the energy it needs from grass without these microscopic helpers. A cow produces 250 liters of methane a day as a product of methanogenic respiration. And that gives you something to ruminate on the next time you drink a glass of milk. The fantastic types of respiration that different types of cells use to break down glucose into energy. Your cells work hard for a living, and so you have to provide them with the energy they need to do their business and provide you with the energy you need to do yours. So remember to keep breathing.